Okay, so we have this complicated, relatively complicated character. It ha it's humanoid. Well, as we can see, it's bipedal, two standing on two feet. It has this mouth in the middle of the body with a tongue uh, coming out of it. It has a head without eyes, but the eyes are everywhere on his body. So it's going to be a fun creature to um, rig. Uh, first thing, if you s if somebody if your producer sees such a timeline in in your project, they will say you will you are fired. Please clean. Um, have a have a clean timeline with a proper naming. So I'm gonna call this body. I'm gonna start with uh, uh, retopologizing the whole thing. Um, but beforehand, I just want to like tidy up everything. So that's gonna that's the body. These are eyes. So I select all of them and I call. Uh, so you can select. Click here and click here and rename and call I. So then suddenly you get like a proper naming of everything. Group them. I put them in a group called eyes. Make sure that all. So I'm going to first thing make sure that all, er, all the history is deleted. So Alt Shift D, the history is deleted. So then I've got these teeth here, up here. So I can select drag and select all of them except the body so these teeth are I group them and I call them mouth teeth and let's name them mouth tooth it needs a okay, um, and there are some teeth here. What is this cube? Oh, yeah, that's tongue. Um, group them, name them body, tooth. Group them, body, teeth, and tongue. Tongue. And that's it. So I have cleaned everything. I don't need all of these groups. Delete them. Group all of that and call it monster. It didn't take me too much time, but like, see how nice and neat, actually the monster body should be, how nice and neat is this one. So for the body, and this body is absolutely unusable because um, of the level of detail. So it has about 700,000 faces. So we have to think how we can, we can manage that. So let's see how, Maya 2020 retopologizing would help me. Shift right click. So I'm going to save everything. I'm going to add a version here. Call it monster version 2. Add my name at the end of it. That's how you know who's working on what. Uh, it's called naming convention. Okay. Shift right click. Um, retopologize. I think such a complicated geometry, I think 50,000 polygons should be um, a good amount. Target face count. Okay, let's go with what it, we have. You know what? I'm going to cheat and I'm going to send this into Houdini. Mm, export selection as a as an OBJ. Mm. 
And in Houdini, I am, so this is Houdini, hello. And um, I create a geometry node. I will explain all of that this evening, what's happening. So instead geometry node, I read what I created with the file and load it inside and apply a Game res uh, or a reduce poly reduce for about I just keep so uh, I just keep at about five percent of it. So you see, it's working much more efficient, much faster than Maya. Maya took us bank. I got. Uh, and it's not bad actually I I'm gonna give a try to game res node as well game res and connect that because it generates it does the map baking the map and everything for us too So you see that things are happening here and it does like a bit of map. Yeah, see like how quickly this, I, I received this similarly like kind of complicated geo with much less detail, but like I don't know which one works best for me. I might just get this one exported back using file cache um, and file cache in file cache. I call it um, Right, uh, master lores dot obj and just single frame is enough and save to disk and then I come back to Maya, import it back. Monster Lores. Okay, I've got this Monster Lores. You see that it's not terribly different, especially when I start to do another retopology on top of that. So I call that body Lores for you and move it into the group. And then I shift right click and I retopologize this one. Um, maybe 50,000 or 40, how many thousand, so this is already 50,000 faces, but what I want is about uh, quadrangulated, so, so, I, I, so at the moment you see that Houdini has given me a nice geo, but like it's triangulate, which means that it's good for game, but like not for my rigging purposes, so I quadrangulate it to see how it works Maya also has a reduce poly radius node but it's way less efficient I don't know why but it's way eff less efficient than Houdini so that's why I just you know cheated there but um, 
Oh, there's, there's. Okay, now you see that like how nicely is the geo? Everything is quadrangulate. If I press three, uh, this is like a very close to what Alan has done. So this is if you compare with the high res. Uh, of course, I have lost some uh, details, but I can live with that because this is 40,000 polygons, this is 700,000. So this is much less efficient when it comes for um, animating. So I can, I can ignore that. So I can take that out and say, I don't delete it. I just keep it there just in case, just hide it. So um, let me see if I can do the same thing for the other parts. Let's say about the teeth, uh, they all have nice amount of polygons. Uh, what about this tongue? Yeah, they're all fine. Okay, let's start rigging. Um, I bring a uh, bipedal, so M gear, shifter, guide template, biped template so you will see I will rig um, different um, oh you see that the, the biped is there it's tiny and that actually that's the right scale and size and direction so your character should be directed to the X to the Z not X so so that's why I just um, adjust my character to that size and the scale. I'm going to see the grid. OK, there you are. Um, Control space bar for, okay, I think that's, that's good. Um, so before carrying on uh, fitting the, these ones into the skeleton, actually I can turn on um, X-ray shading, which is this. Uh, this X-ray shading is really helpful when I want to position things around. I can, um, um, what I do, I make sure that all the objects and everything, so you see that there's a lot of numbers around, so I want to, to select everything here, select, select hierarchy, which means everything and the groups and everything, and I um, modify and freeze transformation. Some of them has incoming transformation. Let's find it. So this is the transformation has been frozen. Oh, yeah, there, that's why. So I have to just select all the hierarchy and make sure that Alt-Shift-D, history is deleted. That one, um, Yeah, all of that. Oh, actually, I would like to um, that amount of. So I don't need all of that together. I can turn them into one, um, you know, polygon. I can combine them. So that's body teeth. I would do the same for the mouth. Shift right click, combine them as a, and delete the history. But I don't do that for the eyes. Um, you will see why. But now it's easier to freeze transformation. Press G to repeat the last command, freeze transformation, freeze transformation for all of them. 
and then the history I don't need these groups for the moment and freeze transformation and freeze transformation okay so this is a very neat and nice and clean geo now okay so before going ahead i would look at what i got in this template i've got fingers this creature has five fingers like what we have here this creature has a mouth which we do have it here and a jaw which is nice but it doesn't have any eyes so these two are if you look at the channel box these two are eye left and right so I can delete them and this is the eye look where the creature is looking at so start to start with um, legs so I can I can put this in a layer actually I delete this layer to I add another layer and I call it template and I put whatever is the geo into that layer add selected actually I can call it geo or and then make them templates so I don't accidentally select them so I can work on left side and then using um, guide manager and duplicate symmetry symmetry size the other side so, I, so you can get rid of anything on right just to make your life easier so that one deleted from shoulder from here okay I think we're good to go uh, let's start with the leg um, so let's let's look at human skeleton um, Oops, I just want the image. Okay, so you see that like how how the hips joints are positioned, and then like we go from the hip joint to the to the knee in this bended way so you kind of like so this these joints function very well if you would be able to hold um, rotation axis rotation act what is rotation axis so this one I can imagine that the hip would be positioned where the hip is from the side this is where the human hip kind of uh, hip joints from side yeah so like from side if you look at it it's this is where it's gonna position so now you might say okay now I'm gonna move this forward but instead of moving this forward better to rotate this until then so then you hold your rotation axis if I uh, hold W on keyboard and press and go to the object mode you see that like this one uh, actually I just want to change um, this um, yeah and then the color to So you can see that actually, let me Alt B, yeah. You can see that like this one has a rotation axis to it. So 
this is gonna help me for future so let's let's see what are these this is um, left foot effector and this is the ankle so if I want to position that ankle better to rotate it from here and then move it from here down to the ankle this is where the ankle is supposed to be you can see it from front as well um, would be nice if I rotate and fit that one too so that hill foot hill so this is like a very weird creature which is nicely designed that I like that weirdness so I move the that the hill up then it comes to those uh, so these are the pivots so where the foot rotates around so you can like kind of find the position and in here position it from front so how I change my um, view I hold spacebar so when you hold spacebar uh, you get all the menu and everything here so and wherever you click you get different things as well this is called hotbox I usually hold spacebar and click here and then go to the right and then go to the front and then go to the perspective so that's that's how I do it fast and quick and easy so fingers okay so what is this one this one is foot oh yeah this is inside the foot foot and then like toes and things so what I do I position them inside and that one goes up to here yeah I can see the skeleton inside the foot so once I'm happy with that I can duplicate symmetry I get the another foot I can okay let's move to the shoulders from front press F move the shoulder up but before moving the shoulder up I want to move everything up so this is a nice position for the root joint it's right in the middle of the body so I don't touch it but I grab this spine and move it up until I find so this is kind of like where the spine this is this this point where the spine finishes and neck begins but well, spine doesn't finish actually it's where the like kind of chest uh, reaches to the towards the end of it so it's the chest and then the, it's clavicle joint and then it comes to arm joints I press up arrow to position it properly and rotate it On top oh it's way back so I have to bring it forward that's elbow that's wrist so elbow is a little slightly back wrist is there I'm gonna move that forward okay now fingers fingers are tricky because so let's say look at my um, thumb it rotates in this direction it it just rotates like that but look at my index finger finger it rotates like this 
So these are rotation axes. These are important when, when you think of, uh, of them. So here also you can see that thumb uh, rotation axis is towards that direction, but uh, index and other are high up. Lo they're looking to the ceiling, but this one is looking towards a different direction. So my, my, I have to try to hold and, and per pertain this kind of uh, directionality and structure. So let's work on that. <laughs> so these are thumb. Uh, this one doesn't go to the to the end of it. This is kind of actually the last um, of bone. So, so for the last part, this will be responsible for rotating this. So you don't need to be worried about the last uh, part of the finger. So that's a nice positioning. I would like these three to be moved like that and then thumb back on place. And the eye up. Okay, nice. These are very long fingers, so uh, let's find the position uh, for all of them. Uh, that one, that one, and that one. Uh, let's move and find the knuckle placing for each one of them. I do this out of experience, like remembering what I used to do in the past and my mistakes. When you do this, you have to keep looking at reference. So here you just look at hands. You know, actually that's a good reference. So and how the skeleton and knuckles and things are, are positioned. That one for the pinky finger, knuckle goes here, and I carry on, move these down, uh, for that I rotate it from root, and down, and down and okay for that one so you see that if I move this down like this rotation axis still like looking up however I want the rotation axis to look like that so then if I go to this one you see that it looks oh to the right direction now so be mindful of about rotation axis all the time when you are rigging. That one. So I have to um, speed it up um, because we're running out of time. Isaac, that was way more than what you said. Be on time, man. Okay, done for that hand. I have 
I'm just going to grab the source, which is here, duplicate symmetry. Now I'm going to go for the, for the neck. Go to the side, press F. This is the root of the neck. Then it comes for, this is neck transition, which is a very important one. But what is important is um, actually, what is important is this net neck effector, which is the tip of the head, kind of end of it. Then you get this. Um, this is going to be mouth, jaw, where what the jaw is. This is going to for this is for the tongue, but this creature doesn't have any tongue. I delete that. So this one is again for the neck. This one is this all of that are for the for the mouth in general, like opening and closing of the mouth. Now mouth lip up, lip low. So so if I so then I need to like position it where the mouth lip up and lip down are. So I'm good with all of that too. Okay, we're ready. So However, I have extra things so like this tongue. So sometimes you want this tongue to move. Or these eyes. For these eyes, I will show you some very interesting trick. I would not rig them with... Um, I, I will put them in a container, which just a group, an empty group, and then rig that empty group and not... And then they will be able to move freely. So, however, for this tongue, I would like to do something for the tongue. So I use a chain FKS line like this one. I add that component. So what I can do, I select the guide and draw that component. It's going to have, direction is going to be towards me. So Z direction, actually, yeah, Z direction, and it has three parts, maybe four created. It's there, you see that? It's there, but where it is connected to, you saw me clicking on the, on the guide and then created it. Actually, if you want this to be like kind of connected to here, for example, click on that and then draw it. So you see that it gets generated and gets um, in. So actually, I'm going to delete that because I want it to be four sections and towards Z. Okay, down. So, so you see that it just generated where I want. So then that's a very nice component inside that. Actually, you can click on the settings of that component. Oh, before it's getting generated, uh, it's called chain. I you can you can um, hmm. the setting is here. So when you click on the settings of the settings of that specific skeletal structure shows up, and I call this tongue. It's center. Yes. Uh, what is the host UI? It's the spine root, which is here. Nice. So you see that it's called tongue now. So I use that to create a nice skeleton for the tongue.
Okay, I okay. I think I'm happy with that. Before moving and um, doing the um, for the eyes, I can start building the the controllers for my creature. So select the guides and build from selection. So before that, I'm gonna save it and then save a a new version. I call it version three because if it crashes and like just dies out and like doesn't work then I have like a backup um, don't delete guides so you get like all the rig there nice and neat rig is here guides are there we don't need the guides we can hide them so you don't need to see the skeleton, the joints, so you can go, go uh, so let me just, yeah. I'm going to turn off the x-ray, uh, but before turning this off, we need to do a little bit of adjustments. We don't need to see a skeleton, so just turn off, show joints, the joints go away, however, you got like these, um, controllers so you can select these controllers if you want to adjust the size of them don't scale them up and down right click on so i'm going to turn off the m gear viewport menu right click and say control vertex select the control vertices and then scale that that way so if so for example this was one of the things that we usually like to resize are these hips they just like get stuck there and they're tiny and then you don't see them so just like resize them make them available this is just like for making your um, controllers a bit tidier for example for the fingers ah oh, they are right uh arms are all right oh maybe okay maybe i would like to scale all of this up here and same here also maybe i want to have this shoulder mm -hmm. visible and this shoulder more visible this mouth is big actually I can select the first joint click here double oh no I should select all of that make it small and put it around the chin this one in the middle is for the head I believe I select it make sure that only that one is selected and just scale it up yes you see that's important and actually I'm just moving it down a little bit okay all good I go to the object mode I have my rig there so it's, you see that it's just functions if I show you the joints functions moves around skeleton moves around you know what I should have attached this one so it's freely it's free now and it just moves with this However, it should have been attached to here. Am I right? Hmm. How to how to adjust it? So we can go back and when we generate the the tongue, instead of selecting the root 
you should remember me that I was when I generated that tongue I selected this root and created there instead of that you could select this and create that um, individual uh, limb added there however I so that's why you don't delete your guide right away you keep it until because you might generate iterations so now we are ready to do uh, skinning so a quick skinning um, so I'm gonna turn off don't show the joints turn off the x-ray okay I will set so you see that this rig has selected a rig set for you there's a controller set and there's a deformer set okay so before skinning I'm gonna put all the eyes in different groups so I call them the same name I group uh, And I, so it would be nicer if the eye would look like this. I can, I do like assign a shader on, on one of them for you just to see. I put the other eyes in a group as well so I group them nice so now they have kind of the same group name okay so now it's time to skin, do the skinning process. So I have elements in this body. I have um, so I have a skeleton, which is this joints one. So you can see through this skeleton by turning this on. If the skeleton is too huge, actually all you need is this deformation skeleton. But whatever it is. If, if this is too big to look at so just go to the display uh, animation joint size and make it make them look smaller so so that's the skeleton in the middle and this skeleton is supposed to move a lot of things including teeth and the body so I just rig the body for the moment so I'm gonna hide the eyes and the teeth body teeth and the mouth teeth and the eyes and the tongue for the moment so this skeleton is hidden most of the time you just don't need it you don't need to touch it because you have all these um, you know rig to use I'm gonna actually sorry one last thing I'm gonna you see that rig is not visible when we go I like that to come out of the body and also the one that is inside which is that one that's a very important part um, you click on this deformer group press down key down key arrow in your um, keyboard and or just select here and just say select hierarchy 
So then, then whatever is inside is getting selected. I'll just click here, press down arrow, all of them are getting selected. Then select your geometry. Then you go to the uh, rigging menu, skin. So I can, you, re you remember me clicking on this bind uh, skin. That's just a default skin algorithm, which is not the best one. So I just go here, reset everything. And I say that I want the rigging happens to just select the joints because there are some rig controllers which you don't want them to be included. You just want the, the, the joints that you just selected. There's a bind method called geodesic voxel. It's a slow, but it gives you the best result if your geometry has no issues. Okay, if your geometry has issues, then you might don't get a result out of that. The the skinning method, also weighted bl blended, is the best one. I usually keep the max like around four and fall off twenty percent and a high resolution. So let's see how this one goes. I'm gonna save everything beforehand and then press find skin. Okay, let's get back to it. I. So let's test out different things that has been rigged. Uh, we can start, so we usually start with the whole um, body going up and down. This tongue is creating issues for us. You see that it just kind of holds part of uh, the body. I will show you how to resolve issues like this. So you see that the body moves up, but these uh, skeletons here, these joints, these ones, they want part of the body. I, um, I accidentally not realize that I have to remove them out of the skinning. They should just impact the tongue, not the body. It's easy. So you just like... Um, do a crazy things like what I did, and then you select your body, right click, paint a skin weight to do you remember the fish? So you just select, right click on these joints and say select influence, and you see suddenly see, oh, this is impacting a large area. So these tongue joints. So just say, hey, I want to be replaced by value zero blood. And the other tongue, mm -hmm. yeah, it's blood. So you see that they are not impacting that part anymore. So I would put that back on, up and down, up and down. So. dancing around um, so I'm gonna turn off the joints I just they are just too much so um, the main foot is this box IK this box if you don't see it properly you know just go control vertex make it larger but just at the moment is this box so if I want to move that, I move this box high up. What I'm trying to look test is this connection here. This is bad. And I will show you how to fix it. So, you know, the fit is moving around. Also, this is bad. See here? I show you how to fix that one too. So, fit. Also, you got this uh, rolling one, which is for the fit to roll up and back. So you you get a very complicated rig in less than hour, an hour. So just like we just generated such a complicated rig. 
However, you know, have you have to go and check every detail like what you just see here. It's not good. Um, let's check the elbow is fine, but it's not the best. Fingers. Oh, fingers are doing well. Usually you get like a very mixed up around the fingers. And they start to, but I used a geodesic voxel, voxeling, so fingers are fine. Um, head. Head also is one of the problems. So just you just want to look here, look there. Make sure that the head works fine. Look up. Wow. You know, what's there? What's there? And then jaw. Jaw usually moves from that part. So, so this jaw is not supposed to impact nose. Or what about this part? This one goes up. But you see that it's not impacting properly the area that I want it. This is high lip. So how to fix it? So I just move this up. I show the joints. I know that this joint should carry a lot of weight. So select my object, right click, paint skin weight tool, right click on this joint, select um, influence. And I say, hey, you are not doing very well. So you have to contribute more. So go to this like painting profile, add to it a little bit of value, hold B and make this brush smaller and just try to say hey hey brush you should be more active paint it up you see me I'm not very clean at painting it because you will see that I will smooth it up a lot of this part of the body okay um, a smooth lot That is a lot better, isn't it? So now I can see that this one does a better job for me. Okay. And I've got this one for the head, which is all the head moving around. This could do also better. Uh, then I have to do texture painting again so how to fix the, these areas so the classic way is just go and skin paint a skin weight tool but there's another way which is deform delta mush you apply the delta mush you just suddenly see a, a result there like if it would be zero one it's kind of a smoothest out these issues Zero, one. I can have more iterations, like 20 iterations, which kind of helps more. 30 iterations, 40, 50, yeah. Uh, smoothing step, don't make it too smooth because it just like loses its details like I think half usually works well but suddenly you get like a very good fix on your um, your problems do you remember there was an issue here it's much better now and there was an issue there it's gone so 
Uh, when you want to animate, MGear gives you a beautiful things, and it's called um, Synoptic, which is this to animate. So, so if you want to reset everything, um, you can reset to bind pose. If this is the position that you like and you want to mirror it, you mirror the pose on the selected things, or flip the pose. Um, so it's a great tool to animate, this synoptic one. Um, use it and just watch videos on how to use it. Just search for M-Gear Synoptic. Uh, we'll get to that point that we're going to animate. So I'm going to show you how to do... Uh, actually, I just wanted to use Synoptic for, for reset everything. Go to the bind pose. We have a bunch of... Okay. Uh, mouth teeth. I have teeth and so the teeth is better to be categorized to I just want to select lower teeth and upper teeth so if you mind I just select all all the lower teeth and make sure that they are Shift right click, extract faces, and okay, I've got so this is upper teeth. Alt Shift D, delete the history, and all of these combined are lower teeth. So for the teeth, it's easy. So you just have to look at the joint. So this joint is supposed to control lower teeth. So this joint, Shift, select your teeth and you just say constraint parents constraint so this joint actually you don't move the joint you remember you just move controllers uh, why they're not moving okay so probably I have chosen another joint so this joint needs to be chosen which is called mouth lip low joint so which is this one here I undo whatever I did okay um. lower teeth and that's gonna go in here Mouth, lip, low joint is supposed to control lower teeth. Constraint, parent constraint. Yeah. If you don't see the movement of the teeth following of the body, you have to make sure that I think the movement of the teeth is more honest than the movement of the body hey three minutes yeah yeah okay sure then so then the, the um then you have to weight paint that part to follow that movement what about the eyes I uh, just do one eye. So like for the eyes, just rig the group of the eyes, not the objects. So, so, so I select, so let's say, I select this eye and I select these two joints. So I, you just saw me selecting the group of the eye. And then I skin 
bind skin. You don't need to do geodesic. Well, you can use just use closest distance, which is a very fast one. But just selected joints, bind skin. So you get the eye skinned to the body, but the group of the eye skinned to the body. The eye itself can be animated like separately. So I just did one eye, you can do the rest as well. Um, yeah, so that was a very quick rigging and skinning. See you at 3.